Hello, good morning. My name is Valentina V and welcome to Tips and Tricks Tuesdays with me. Um, it is Tuesday morning. I got my cozy sweater on, new sweater from Target. I got my candle, not a fire alarm like some people have said. And it is a, uh, it's called cozy. That's what the candle is called. And I'm just projecting cozy vibes because it is cold in Los Angeles right now. And because of the, um, because of the fact that I can't have my audio all messed up, I had to turn my, my heater off. So it's, it's just cold. I'm going to pull up myself on Behance. So if you are watching Not this on uh, YouTube, on the Adobe Video and Motion YouTube channel, you can pop over to behance.net slash live and you can chat along with me. Uh, looks like we got Peter Beck's here. Uh, Steve Kossaboom is here. Um, Mayan Gabriel. Hello, everybody. Where are you watching from? Let me know. Uh, also, let me know if you edit videos, what kind of videos you edit, and what sorts of things you would like to be faster at doing. That's the whole uh, idea of today is how do we get faster at doing what we want to do with Premiere. Um, so definitely let me know. We got Peter from Chicago. Uh, we got Allison Parks. Hey, Allison. We got Valentina from Los Angeles. Um, we got uh, Paco over in the Yay area. Uh, Mostafa in gray old UK. <laughs> Uh, Steven says, cold in the room. I guess her hot shortcuts might help. You got it. You got it. Um, we got Wellington, New Zealand, Italy. That, you know, it's all making sense now. It's all making sense now why I'm live streaming so early at 7.30 in the morning for California time because there's people in New Zealand and there's people in Italy and there's people in Ecuador and Scotland and Barcelona. Hola, como estas? <laughs> so good. All right. So today we are doing um, some tips and tricks for how to edit faster. And something that I've noticed in my previous live streams that I've done is that uh, people seem to really like when I do it the slow way. And then they seem to really like when I, you know, show how to do it faster. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. I may be showing you the slow way first. So if you are someone who is a self-taught editor, someone who like never really learned all the shortcuts, you may be used to doing something one way. And then I'm going to show you how to do it uh, faster, a completely different way. So we got Massachusetts, Baltimore, Maryland, um, Brazil, uh, my aunt says I'm obsessed about automation and fast workflow, but I'm terrible on Premiere Pro. Well, that's what I'm here for. Timur says, when does it start? It starts right now, Timur. Let's go. Let's get in. I just like to talk for a little bit so that everyone is in the room. So here we are inside of Premiere Pro and just to introduce you to this project a little bit so that you're not like looking around lost. Um, this is my project for a cooking demo. Oh, I got to get my zoom tool. Hold on. That's important. I use this arrow. Let me zoom into the screen. There we go. Okay. So there we go. So we got the footage, audio sequences, graphics folder. We got a stock media folder, and then we have a couple of random clips. Um, this is just like, just an overall tip is just organize as much as possible because it's going to save you time later. For example, uh, I don't actually know what are these random clips over here, just some random clips. So I'm just going to make a new bin and I'm going to call it 05 random or maybe misc miscellaneous. And I'm going to put those in just so that everything is clean. In the footage bin, we have Adobe stock videos. So these are stock footage that I got from Adobe stock from the store and they're in here, they are purchased. And if I double click on every single one of them, you can see that they pull up here. These are uh, videos that, you know, still have the watermark on them. But if I want to purchase them, I click on the little 
uh, on the little shopping cart icon. So that's so something that's really cool about Adobe Stock is that you can, you know, get the watermarked videos in there. I have camera A, camera B, camera C. So this is a uh, cooking review demo video. And listen, I'm not a vlogger by any stretch of the imagination. So I pretended like I knew anything about cooking just to make some demo footage for this video. Uh, so this is me cooking. This is me trying to review cooking. Um, you, you know how it goes. So this is the, the A camera. A camera. Wow. Look at that face. I'm so competent. I'm so good at it. Um, I have my B camera, which is the side angle over here of whatever I'm doing. So it's a completely different camera, by the way. And then we have our C camera over here, which is the top view. So um, that looks good. Also inside of the B camera bin over here, if you double click it, I open it up and all of my thumbnails populate. Not only do I have the footage, the side footage, but I also have all of my B-roll footage, which is all of this, all of that, right? So let's say that I was actually, you know, editing this video and the first thing that I want to do, maybe I'm a little bit too lazy to start editing it right away and I want to procrastinate a little bit. Um, hint, hint, I do this always, I'm always procrastinating, is I want to make a string out sequence because making a string out sequence is easy. I don't have to listen to any audio from the video. I, I can just listen to music in the background and just be making my string out sequence. So um, Z by HP Tech, Rick says, same codec all around. Uh, it's all H.264 as far as I remember. All those footage is in the same codec and yeah, it's all MP4. Anyway, so we have this footage and as we look through it, uh, let's just play it through. You see how it plays through in real speed? That's fine, but it's actually was recorded in 60 frames per second in order to use slow motion. So first things first, all of this footage is in this bin. We want to separate it from the other footage. We wanna separate it from this side footage. And there's also in the same B camera, there's also footage from a different episode entirely from an egg cooker episode or from a um, tuna salad episode. So there's, there's three groups of footage. There's this group that has these four in it. Then there's this group that has these uh, 10 items. And then there's this group, right? So one way that you can visually separate them is instead of going to the list view like this or to the icon view, you can go to the freeform view right here. And you might think initially, oh, it's the same thing, but it's not. So I'm going to press the tilde key, which is the uh, squiggly line on the top left of the keyboard. And this is what it looks like. In fact, let me, let me pull up my let me pull up my drawing tool here. I use Epic Pen for for those who want to know. Oh, actually, it might not work with Zoom, right? Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So y this may look like just a, a worse version of the thumbnail view because they're all over here. Oh, you know what? It's my shortcuts that don't work with Zoom. That's what it is. Um, because thumbnail view kind of populates it like this and freeform view populates like this, but that is not the case. So if I right click, I can align to grid or I can reset to grid. So when I go to reset to grid, I can reset it by whatever I want. So I'm going to say I want to reset it by name and now they're in a grid again. It's very similar to this view, but you're probably again wondering like, What's the whole point of this freeform view? Well, think of it like sticky notes on your desktop, like literally on top of your desk, like little sticky notes, right? And you're just placing them all over and you're organizing them. So in this case, check it out. I can go, okay, these are my my tuna salad clips. These are the close-ups. I'll put them together. And these are, this is the wide and this is, the wide I don't really like. So I'm gonna go to um, 
I'm going to right click it and I'm going to change the size. I'm going to change the clip size to small. So I don't really like the wide, but it's fine. And out of these two, I really like the first one. So I'm going to change the clip size to large. So that's like visually going to tell me that that's good. And then I have the little small one and then I have this one next to it. Cool. And then all of the B-roll clips, let me put them over here together like that so that they're visually, you know, all the food ones I'm going to put together, all of these I'm going to put together in a little stack. You see how I'm organizing this? It's like an endless table that you can organize things on. Um, and it's going to, you can organize it any way you want. So let's see, the menu clips are going to be here together. The box clips are going to be, let's put them over here together. Yep. And then all of these guys over here, yeah, I'll just keep them in, I'll just keep them together like that. So now I kind of almost made three categories for myself and I can actually zoom out too and like make them even more separate or even more condensed. I can group, group clips together, you know, like that. So it shows me uh, an overall picture of all of my clips and all of my categories that is a lot more organized than something like this where they're all together. Um, here they're all sort of in the same little, in the same little bubbles. And then I can go, okay, let me, let me now that I see everything, let me change the label on these. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to label and I'm going to make them purple. So you can see the label on them, which is this little dot here that's changed to purple. So now when I drag them into my timeline, they're going to be purple or I can select all of them, right click label. Let's make them yellow. These are all yellow now. So that's one way to organize it. And then I can just press the tilde key. So now they're all here for me, ready to go. And I can just pull them into my timeline. I currently don't have a timeline. Now, a lot of people when making timelines, they may go, okay, let me make a new sequence, right? Let me go sequence, file, new uh, sequence. Okay. Let me set my sequence settings and all that jazz. You don't have to do that. If your sequence is the same as any of your files, has the same you know, size and dimensions, you can just use that file to make a new sequence and it's really easy. So in this case, I'm gonna drag any of these, like maybe I'll drag the first one and I'm gonna drag it on top of this icon right here, which is the new, new item icon. It looks like a, a page turn. Give it a sec to save right here. So I'm just going to take this and drag it on top. Oh. Ah, because I'm in freeform view, it actually dragged over. So one sec, let me pop into this, drag it on top. So it's basically created a sequence in here of uh, just this clip in it. And maybe I don't want this clip in there initially, so I can just delete it. It's not in there. Um, but it also named the sequence after the name of the clip, C16. So if I don't want it to be named after that clip, I can right click. And right here it says reveal sequence in project. So not only is it going to show me where the sequence is in the project that I've just created, but I can then go ahead and like change the name. So if I do reveal sequence in project, there it is. It has revealed it. It's called C0016. So I can go ahead and rename it to string out or B-roll string out. There we go. So this is my sequence that's gonna be the B-roll string out and it has the same size and properties as that one clip that I dragged into it earlier and I did it just like that without going to create a new sequence. So a lot faster. Now it is in here now, it's inside the footage cam B folder, right? And I wanna get it inside my sequences folder. So if I, you remember when I go up to my like organization here, my main organization of everything, I have my footage folder here. And that sequence, because I made it off of a clip, it got put in the same bin as that original clip. So it's over here in cam B, right? And to put it into the sequences bin, I have to drag it in. But you see how like all of that, I had to go find it. 
and I had to close up all my other bins. So let me, let me undo that. So it's in the B folder, but I had my A folder open and I had my C folder open and I had to go ahead and like go into it in full screen. But instead of doing any of that, you can just use the search bar over here. So if you just search, what did I call it? String out. There it is. It pulls it up right there. And then I can just put it into my sequence has been real easy because uh, the search box, you're going to be able to find whatever the clip name is or whatever the sequence name is, but it's also going to show you your whole folder organization. So you can always just like drop it in there, uh, which is super, super useful if you are just moving clips around. We have to change one setting. So just FYI, we're going to be back in five seconds. Stick around. So, le oh, hello, everybody. We're back. We changed one thing and we're back. Lisa asked um, a really good question, actually. She says, what's a string out sequence? So a sequence is what Premiere calls their timeline. So the sequence is your working timeline, like something that you are working on. So for example, this sequences bin is where I keep my sequences. And I have all sorts of sequences here. I have this sequence called chopping onions, which is just consists of one clip of me chopping onions. That's it. Um, I have this sequence called show intro one, which is just a sequence that contains the intro graphic to the show. Um, I have another sequence called, let's say tuna salad first cut. And this one has the first cut of my tuna salad video. And all of these sequences are all up here. As soon as I open it, they show up here at the top as tabs. So I can go back and forth to different sequences and see the different videos I'm working on. It could be a different video entirely. It could be a different version of the same video. Um, you can also put a sequence within a sequence. So for example, I have show intro one, right? So this is my intro sequence to the food show. I have three clips um, and a little bit of animation. And if I render it, let's see how fast it'll render. Oh, just a couple seconds. If I render it, I'm able to show it to you. And um, then I can just take that sequence and put it inside of another sequence and keep reusing it as my show intro. A string out is a, a sequence that is full of only the usable footage. And I will show you how to create a string out in mere moments. Um, a string out is all the usable footage, essentially. So you're cutting out all of like, uh, all of the use useless stuff. Like when someone, you know, if you're recording yourself, for example, and you're reaching over to your camera to press record, right? This whole part of the video, when you're reaching over and then you're fixing yourself, all of that you don't need. So you can cut that out before you even start editing. So this is what the intro looks like to this video. Check it out. Right. And you might think it starts over black, but it doesn't. It actually starts over transparency. There's nothing in this layer. So when I put this sequence into another sequence, it's going to be transparent. So if I go, for example, into this sequence called tuna salad first cut, right? Actually, let's go into not the tuna salad. Let's go into egg review first cut. There we go. So this is my egg review video. And let's just say that I want to place that intro sequence uh, right here, right there. 
So one way that I could do it is I could go to tuna salad first cut, which is this, oh, sorry, tuna show intro one. This is the sequence, highlight everything, copy it, command C, then go into egg review three first cut, paste it here, command V and see what happens. Number one, it pasted over my current footage that was there, right? So the sequence or the, the clips that I pasted are now lodged in here like this, right? It completely destroyed what I had here. Um, and uh, number two, it's all of the clips and I don't want all of the clips. I just want the sequence, right? So instead of doing that, a faster and more efficient way to do it is, you know, show intro one, we have it right here. So if we right click, go to reveal sequence and project, there it is. It's called show intro one, that's the sequence. So we'll go into review three first cut and we'll just drag the sequence called show intro one into this sequence, right? Cause we want the whole show intro as one giant chunk and check it out. It drags as one giant chunk and it drags into here. But here's the problem is that it has overridden the audio layer down here, right? Because this sequence has its own audio layer. Um, every sequence is going to have an audio layer, even if you don't have any audio in it. So here in show intro one, we actually don't have any audio at all. But when I dragged it over, it had audio. It has like a blank audio layer. So something to do when you're doing that is you can either lock all of the audio tracks so that they're untouchable, completely untouchable. So that when you drag this in, it automatically drags into the into the fifth um, track. Or you can make sure instead of doing that, you can make sure that the uh, source patching, which is this A1 that's on the left side of each track and track targeting that both of these are enabled for track five. And that will tell Premiere anytime you're dragging something in, drag it onto this layer instead. So drag it onto this A5. You could also do the same thing with V4 over here. So you can make sure that it always drags into A5 or V4. So let's do that. Let's make sure that our source patching and track targeting is enabled for those layers. And I don't have all of these locked, so I'm having them open. And then I just drag it in and it automatically drags onto that layer. Isn't that cool? Um, but now we have to do this thing where we want we want this, we want this show intro. We want it to be here. We want it to be in between these two, these two, um, actually we don't want it in between, but if we did, if we wanted it in between, uh, what something people that would, what people would normally do is they'll drag it onto V4 and A5, uh, then they'll zoom out of the whole timeline, which is a lot of stuff to zoom out on, right? Then they'll select all of this stuff like that, then they'll zoom all the way back in. Then they'll bump this over. And then they'll bring this in, right? That's a lot of work. What's another way to do this faster? So let me undo this, Com control Z or command Z. Um, a much faster way to do it is just hover your mouse over this first uh, area and then press A. And that changes your mouse to the track to select forward tool. And now wherever you click, it's going to select all the clips that are after your mouse. So you can select all those clips now, then click V to change your mouse back to the selection tool and then move that over like that, right? So that is one way to do it. Another way to do it, if I delete this entirely, is as I'm dragging, right? I hold down command or control and alt at the same time. And that does it for me, but it only does it on the um, on the track that I'm on, right? Yeah. 
So that's another way to do it if you just have one track. But this is this is how I would recommend it. But we're not actually we're not actually doing that because remember the very front of the show intro it was transparent. So it's meant to go over the end of the previous clip. So it's meant to kind of overlap on top of the end and the beginning. So something that you can do that is really, really helpful is tell yourself or marker for yourself where that end and where that beginning is. So if we go into uh, the, if, you know, if we just cr scrub through it, I can tell that right, right here where this circle where this circle grows and as soon as it touches the edges of the video that's where uh this clip is completely opaque right not no more transparency and that is where i want the um the front end of the intro to end what do i mean by that that's where i want the overlay to happen so first thing i'm going to do I, I'm just tired of this. Uh, I'm just tired of this awful um, audio, like empty audio layer just hanging over. So I'm going to delete it. I'm going to hold down Alt to select just the audio layer because it's actually linked right now. So I'm just going to hold down Alt, select just the audio layer, delete it. Then I'm going to bring my show intro onto layer V4 and then overlay it on top of the previous clip like this, see? But the problem is that I don't know where it starts, where it ends. You know, I could do something like this where it actually, my my previous, my previous edit point ends before the show intro actually starts. So I have this like area of, area of black Right. So I want to tell myself exactly where it is. So a cool way to do it is with a clip marker. So let me just go to where that is. I can go left and right arrows on my keyboard to go one frame at a time right there. So right there is where I want that clip to um, the previous clip to end. So I'm going to press M. And as you can see, that has introduced a marker on that clip. I'm going to do the same thing over he here right where the, the transparency starts in the middle. I'm going to find that Doo -doo, right there. I'm going to press M for marker. And now because I have snapping enabled, which is this uh, magnet, I can now just, it automatically snaps to the end there. I can press A, select all of that, and then bring it over and snap it right there. So now you know, test out and unbox for you. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, perfect. It's perfectly aligned. So this is the everyday. But we were talking about earlier, we were talking about um, how to do that string out sequence. So let's go to B-roll string out. And remember, we had created the string out sequence by just plopping a uh, one of these B-roll clips, where was it? Cam, it was in cam B and let's go to our, yeah. So we plopped one of these B-roll clips directly into the, the sequence to create the sequence, right? So let's just make sure that now that we've created it, it is at the dimensions, frames per second that we want it to be. So I'm gonna go to sequence and I'm gonna go, oh, I'm gonna go to sequence, sequence settings, and just check those sequence settings. And as you can see, they are wrong. Why are they wrong, Valentino? Why? Well, check it out. The time base over here is 59.94 frames per second. You're probably wondering why is that wrong? Well, because we originally want this footage to play back in slow motion, right? We want this footage to play back at 23.976 frames per second, but it was captured at 60 frames per second. So if we drag it, if we create a sequence from it, it's going to create a sequence that's 54, 59.94 frames per second, but we want our sequence to be 23.976. So we're just going to change this 
you can always change it, right? Uh, 23.976 frames per second. Cool. And then we press OK. So now our B-roll string out sequence is ready and primed for our footage. But guess what? If I drag it straight in like this and play it, look what happens. Oh, actually, let me, because I already, I already prepped it a little bit. Let me undo that, clear it out. Okay, drag it in like this. So there it is. So that's the full clip. And guess what? It's not in slow motion. You can see, you can see the jitteriness of it. So what the way that a lot of people like to build their string out sequences is they'll do this. Gosh, darn it, Valentina. Why did you have to be so prepared and prep everything and then not unprep it? You know what I'm saying? So let me, let me unprep a couple of these so that you can see. So what people will do is they'll select all of these clips. They'll select all of them. And then they will, oh. uh, yeah, so let's just select all of these. They'll bring them in, these long clips, right? They'll bring them in and then they'll start cutting. So they'll go like, okay, where's the point in my video that, okay, right there. I want to cut out everything at the beginning of that clip. And I just want to start it there because that's where my hand comes in to open the box. And I just want that part of the clip. So I'm going to cut it like that. Then I'm going to take that, delete it. Then I'm going to move it forward. Then I'm going to go to, okay, there. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to select the rest of the clip. It's garbage. It's garbage, sis. I'm going to delete it. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Um, I only want this portion of it. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to select that, delete it. Okay. Then, okay. That's it. That's the only part I want. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to select that, delete it. And then I'm going to take this and move it over that. Oh my God. That just took forever, right? That just took forever. Listen, if you are cutting on your timeline like this, instead of using, uh, in and out and shortcuts and all that. Even if you're doing this, there's a much easier way to do it. So let me show you how to do it if you're if you're doing it on your timeline. If you insist on doing your editing in your timeline, you don't have to. But if you insist, let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna undo, 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 undo. Okay. So I want to again. I want to start right before I open. Right. Hmm. How? How do I do that? Well. There is a shortcut that will insert a cut at your playhead and delete everything in front of it to the previous cut. And that shortcut is the Q button. That's all you have to do. Just Q. Bam. That's it. Then we go to the end of, okay, right there. And that's, that's where we want to cut. And we want to delete everything from that cut point to the end of the clip until the next cut point. That is the W command. That's all we have to do. We just gotta go W, bam. And not only will it delete it, but it will ripple the clips after it as well. So then we keep going, we keep going. Okay, we find, okay, that's where we wanna start. We just press Q. Then we keep going. Okay, that's where we wanna end. And we press W and we move on, right? Q. Actually, this is, I think, the same clip. So I want to delete it. So instead of going delete and then moving over, all I have to do is Command D. Command D for ripple delete. That's it. So keep going. Okay. I want, now I want multiple sections of this clip. I don't just want um, to do a Q and W and trim off the beginning and trim off the end because in this long clip, not only do we do like a overview of the whole egg cooker. Ooh. Oh, where are you? Not only do we do an overview of the egg cooker manual, but then we go out inside and we show some pages and then we go closer up. So there's a lot of, there's like four or five different things in this clip that I want to use. So the first thing I will trim the beginning of it, right? So I want to trim everything from, uh, this start to the playhead. So I will be pressing Q. So I'm going to press Q. 
And now instead of W, because W will actually get rid of everything trailing, right? W will get rid of everything. If I press W, this clip's over. Bam, that's it. So instead of doing W, I'll do Command K. Command K will insert a cut at the playhead right here. So do, 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 do. So Kevin asks, can you make in and outs in project window clips? Yes, you can, Kevin. You're like one step ahead of me because that's what I'm going to show you next. But I want to show you how to do this first because I feel like a lot of people starting out, they want to cut their clips in the timeline instead of using in and out points. And I'll show you why in and out points are more beneficial. I'll prove it to you in just a sec. But we're like, you know, we're like building up to it, you know, because some people are new. Some people never edited before. So we're going to go again to the, where the next part of the video is that I want, which is, you know, this portion right here. And then we're going to press Q. Then we're going to the end of that portion, press Command K. Keep going. Okay, press Q. Keep going. Actually, press Q here. Command K. Press Q. Command K, and then on the zoom in, Q, Command K, Q, Command K, and then Q, actually Q again, Command K. Actually, that could just be a W, so we'll trim the rest of the clip. So you see how we've trimmed this clip really quickly. Oh, I have a message. I'm all good. Thank you for letting me know. So that was really easy, right? Q, W, Command, K, Q, Command, K, Q, Command, K, right? But what, Valentina, what happened to the slow motion part of this? Because look at all these clips, they're jittery, right? Because they're not in slow motion. They're not playing back in slow motion. Valentina, I thought that you had recorded this at 60 frames per second just so that we could have the slow motion. What's going on? Well, listen, if you want slow motion, something that a lot of people do is they'll go ahead and uh, change the speed of now each and every single one of these individual clips. So for example, this last clip right here, if we want it in slow motion, it's a little jittery right now, right? They'll right click and they'll go to speed duration and then they'll change this here so instead of the duration being two seconds they'll change it to like let's do let's do four seconds right so that's 50 percent speed and they'll click okay so now it's four seconds and because the original clip has all those frames inside of it to play with this is going to be real slow motion so that's nice. Actually, I'm going to get rid of all of the audio so it doesn't bother us. So like that. Okay, great. But now, oh, oh, snap. Well, now I got to change that clip to slow motion. And my in and out points are already set. So if I go right click speed duration and then I change that to 50. Um, okay, but hello, the rest of this clip is gone, right? The rest of this clip is actually over here. So, oh no. So instead of doing that, I'm going to undo the slow motion. I have to scooch every clip now. I have to scooch it like this. Oh my goodness. I have to give it room to grow on the side so that it could, you know, expand by, by twice as much. That is so much work. Even if you do like a select all and then speed duration and then do speed 50, even if you do that, that's still too much work. And then you got to close all these gaps. There's a shortcut, by the way, to close gaps. Bam. It's, uh, but it's not an automatic shortcut. So e that, that's another way to, that's another like bonus tip that I'm throwing in there. If you want to close all gaps, uh, instead of doing this, this nonsense right here, um, just go to edit keyboard shortcuts, type in the word gap. And then right here, there's a shortcut for close gap. I don't think it's it's there by default. So I I made it control shift G and control alt G. I have two shortcuts for closing gaps because I'm extra like that. But anyway, um, this is so much work, right? 
because oh my gosh it's so much work why can't the clips just be slow motion in the first place they can they can so let's let's redo this okay so b-roll string out i'm going to right click i'm going to go reveal sequence and project let me duplicate this and then delete all the clips in there so i can go to right click and say duplicate and it creates that b-roll string out copy sequence or if i want it to be even faster um, i just hold down control and drag down and that creates a copy so i'm going to uh, do B-roll string out slow-mo, right? Double click it to open it. So now we have the B-roll string out slow-mo and then we have the B-roll string out. These two sequences are identical because all I did was copy it. But on this slow-mo sequence, we're going to delete all the work we've done because we're going to redo it but better this time. So we're going to go to cam B um, and we're going to, we're going to go to these clips. Let's, let's take a look at list view because this is really important. This is what I want you to take a look at our sequence our sequence this sequence that we're dropping everything in here this is 23.976 frames per second these clips they are 59.94 frames per second but all of those frames are going to be hiding when we drag them directly like we did before um so what I suggest for B-roll clips, for slow-mo clips, is interpret them first before dragging them in. So do this, select all of the 5994. And if you're not sure, like if they're, if they, if they're all over your project, because here for me, I mean, they're, oh, on, uh, hide floating meeting controls. Here for me, they're all like lined up like this. So that's easy. But what if they weren't? What if they were like all over the place? You know, what if one was here and then one was here because this is alphabetical and you shot them all all weird? Um, you could always just uh, arrange it by frame rate up here by clicking this button next to frame rate. So this will arrange them all by the frame rate. So all of the 5994 frames per second clips are all together. So I'm going to select all of them by going to the first one, holding down shift, and then going to the last one. So now they're all selected. I'm going to right click, go to modify, go to interpret footage. And then here's where the magic happens, right? It says you can either use the frame rate from file, which is 59.9401, very, very obscure number, right? Or you can have it assume a different frame rate from the jump. So I'm going to say, yeah, please assume the frame rate of the sequence. And we know that the frame rate of the sequence is 23.976, another very obscure number, but it's also the standard frame rate. That's why I know it. And then we'll press OK and check it out. All of these clips are now 23.976 frames, oh, frames per second. <laughs> of course, I right clicked for no reason. Um, and we know that they're the right ones because they're the yellow ones. Remember, we labeled all of the B-roll clips with yellow earlier. So now check it out. If we play through them, they'll play back in slow motion already. So, I mean, it's very slow. You could hear it too. very slow motion so now if we did the same thing like we did before let's arrange these by name and we dragged these in just like we did before look what happens they're like twice as long so even if you are doing the the thing where you're you're cutting it like the q and then the command k and then the q and then the command k etc now at least you're already cutting slow motion footage from the jump instead of trying to turn it slow motion later after the whole fact right um but i still don't like this workflow it's not my favorite workflow my favorite workflow is the in and out workflow and that's what i'm going to show you so the first thing first things first is if we go to this uh first clip and you hear you see me scrubbing do you hear any noise of me scrubbing? 
No. So the first thing is by default, um, if you go into preferences audio, by default, um, Premiere has this enabled, play audio while scrubbing. So by default, this is enabled. So when you open up your Premiere, press OK. One thing that's really annoying for me is when I'm scrubbing through B-roll that has audio that's been recorded on the camera, but I don't care about it. It's just, you know, some, some, it's just audio that was recorded on the camera, but I'm scrubbing and I hear this, right? That's so, an oh, Oh, you mean, okay. I probably um, disabled the audio op option when I did the screen share. Once, one, one sec, let me, uh, let me see if I can fix that one sec. Okay, so I've just been alerted that you can't hear it anyway, but like, trust me, it sounds gross. Okay, it sounds like that's a really good imitation of it. So if you don't want to hear all that nonsense, especially slow motion nonsense when you're um, scrubbing, just go to uh, file edit preferences or it might be file preferences if you're on a Mac. I haven't edited on a Mac in a few years, so. I don't know things. Go to audio and then um, uncheck play audio while scrubbing. And that's going to not play your audio while scrubbing, right? So now you're gonna, you can just like play your favorite music or whatever. So this is the in and out workflow for making string outs and it is so fast. So what I'm gonna have you practice if you ever do this is just keep your fingers on the I, O, and period buttons on your keyboard. The I, the O, and the period. Period, sis. So, okay, I spend too much time on TikTok. Um, <laughs> one sec. Every time I... So, interestingly enough, Zoom's shortcuts are the same. S some of them overlap with the shortcuts that I've made for my uh, screen presentation software. So sometimes they show up anyway. So you're going to, you're going to pop up each of these clips and you have your own, uh, scrubber here, your own current time indicator CTI, otherwise known as a playhead, otherwise known as this blue thing. So that's what you're going to use. You're going to just go to the beginning and then start looking for the place that is, uh, in, in your clip where you want to start. And then you press I then go to the place in your clip where you want to end and then you press o and as you can see what has happened is it has highlighted that area of the clip in light gray and then you're just going to put it into your timeline now a lot of people would just drag it into their timeline like this and then if they keep going let's say keep going next one uh right here i O, and then they drag it in like this. Let's keep going. See all this stuff with the hands. We don't need any of that. Okay. I and O, and then they would drag it in like this. That is so long. So much dragging, so much dragging. Instead of dragging, just press period. That's all you have to do. So all you have to do is again, I, O period. And that's it. And guess what? Your playhead jumps to the end of the clip. So that clip is put wherever the playhead is. So the playhead automatically jumps to the end of that clip. So you can go to the next one and you can say, okay, I, O period. I, oh, I, O period. I, 
Oh, period. And uh, it might be, I don't know if it is for you. It might like flicker back and forth for, for you. That's because um, the way that this footage was shot, I didn't like. Don't worry about it. Um. Okay. Then here as well, I'm going to wait until I open it. And right there, I and O, period. And you see how quickly, how quickly I am building this sequence with just those three buttons that are already on my keyboard. You don't need a fancy schmancy um, workstation for any of this. You just use your own keyboard and the letters that are on your own keyboard. That's it. Do 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 very quickly building a string out. Na, na, na. Okay, cool. You see that? And now now they're all here. Bam. So this is why, you know, I had that question earlier. Um, why are you making a string out? Well, instead of having hours worth of footage to to look through now i only have a few minutes worth of footage and it's all the best footage it's all the most usable footage so then let me get rid of all this audio so i'll hold down alt drag a marquee box oh i'll hold down uh alt drag a marquee box delete this audio so then when i'm getting into the edit for example i have here egg review three first cut right and i'm trying to get into the edit i'm trying to drop this b-roll footage over here on track v4 on top of my video i'm trying to drop b-roll clips in like a b-roll clip over here and another b-roll clip over here to like supplement what i'm saying all i have to do is pancake these timelines and then just drag one from the other so i'm just going to expand this a little bit and then i'm going to take this egg review three first cut i'm going to you know select the name of it and then literally drag this entire panel to the bottom of the screen Watch what happens. Bam. So now both timelines are on screen at the same time, both sequences. So I can then be like, oh, okay. So in this case, I'm talking about um, the packaging. So I can go ahead and just drag this clip from the packaging over, over onto this uh, the sequence and I could drag this and I could start editing right away. And it just, it makes everything just so much simpler. What if I wanted to make it even simpler? And I mean, this is like, like stupid, easy editing, foolproof, right? Because right now I'm listening to myself talk so that I know where to place each B-roll clip, right? I'm talking about the packaging. So this is where I want to place those. I'm talking about this, but like, what if this is a project that I started three months ago and I only got the B-roll now? Like, what if it's something like that, right? You want to give yourself little hints of where you want things to be. So instead of doing that, First, before I do that, I'm going to help myself and tell myself where these things are. And remember how we did a clip marker earlier when we were doing um, this, the show intro, and we placed a little marker, we placed a little marker here on the clip to uh, let us know where where things needed to be, where things needed to line up to. Well, let's do the same thing, but this time, on the entire timeline as a whole. So if you, oh, by the way, if you go, um, if you scrub your timeline just normally, just like by default, if you're scrubbing your timeline, look at what happens. It's always going to be selecting the top clip, right? You can see that it selects the top clip. So as I move my current time indicator, it selects the top clip. So say I want to place a marker on my timeline individual of the clip, right? If I place a marker right now, if I press M, whoop, if I press M, it's going to add a clip marker instead of a timeline marker. Why? It's because the clip was selected. Why? It's because I had my indicator over it. So instead of having it on the clip, I have to click out, I have to click somewhere else 
and then I have to press M and that way, oop, and that way the marker shows up here, right? So again, like, let's say I want to place a marker around 44 seconds. So I want to place that marker here. Um, but, uh, you know, I have, so I have my, my playhead there and then I press M oops, it accidentally shows up on my clip. So instead I have to click out of the clip and then press M for that marker to show up there, but we can make it even easier because we can just go to sequence and deselect selection follows playhead, just deselect it. So now, whenever I move my playhead, it never selects the top clip. So it, when I press M for marker, it's always going to go on the sequence. So now I can use these markers. Markers are not just point markers. They're also durational markers and you can also write things in them. So for example, on this one, on the first one here, let's say that this is where I want to place my first B-roll clip and I'm Maybe I've, I, I'm telling this to myself for later so that I don't forget. So while holding down Alt, I'm going to click on the marker and drag it out and make it durational so that later when I'm editing, I'll know that from here to here, that's where I want to place that B-roll clip. I can also double click on the marker to pull up the marker menu and I can give it a name. So for example, packaging packaging, right? And let's make it red and I'll click okay. So that's where the packaging B-roll goes. Maybe over here, I'm gonna press Alt, drag that, double click that. And this will be for the, um, this will be for the uh, booklet and then press okay. And then let's make that a little bit longer. Yep. And uh, et cetera, et cetera. So now when I drag this down and I pancake it, right? Um, let's get the string out up here. And normally, you know, I have a I have two monitors, so and I also have 4K monitors, so it's not like so constrained as you can see here. It's like there's just more to play with. But <clears throat> for the purposes of this demonstration. Uh, it's all here. Let's open B-roll string out slow-mo. And now I'm like, oh, I know exactly where to place the packaging B-roll because I already labeled it over here. And I know exactly where to place the booklet B-roll. So I'm like, oh, heck yeah. That's all I have to do is just drop it in here. Okay, that's like one thing. Let's do another packaging B-roll like in here. Cool. I'm literally editing this without even looking at it because I can see what the thumbnails are here. I can see where to put it here. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So easy, done. That's it, done. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Roland asks, is it better to pancake rather than importing it as a nested sequence? Very good question, Roland. So if I were to import it as a nested sequence or um, like I did before, so B-roll string out slow-mo, if I go right click, reveal sequence and project, there it is. And then I drag it onto here like this, right? I could, because that sequence, that whole sequence is now in here. But the thing is now inside this sequence, I have to find that clip. I think, uh, what, what I use nesting for primarily, let's find that booklet clip. What I use nesting for primarily is just like I did in that intro. If you have several clips that are already in their own little, see, now I have this, but now I have to, now I have to split it up again into like shorter chunks. There we go. So you can, you can bring in an S sequence, but the thing is like these clips, they're in a string out and the string out, um, the order of the string out doesn't matter. The length of each clip doesn't matter because it's just a sequence of usable footage, right? Whereas 
this show intro, that's an actual, that's an actual little build that I've got going on, right? There's like a little intro animation. There's a couple of different layers. Like this is a, a fully completed little piece. So this fully completed little piece, this makes more sense to be dragging this into the, the actual project rather than these clips, which the whole point of them even being on a separate timeline is just to gather them there together so that we can see the usable clips all in one place, if that makes sense. Let me, let me just scroll up um, to see if there's any other questions. We have Joshua Davis who asks, what are your favorite YouTube channels about filmmaking and editing? Really good question, Joshua. Um, one of my favorite channels for filmmaking is called Film Riot with Ryan Connolly. Uh, it's just called Film Riot, but Ryan Connolly is the guy who runs it. He's awesome. They have tutorials on everything. Also, um, I really love Corridor Digital. They do a lot of like VFX stuff. I also really love Indie Mogul. They bring in like professional cinematographers, professional gaffers to explain their setups. And of course, Aperture, which is the ch one of the channels I host where I teach cinematography. As far as editing, um, Premiere Gal is a really great editing channel. And we also have Leela from YouTube, um, two really great editors. So yeah, uh, definitely check those out. Do, 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 do. Just checking more of the chat. Um, Rima asks, in order to change the speed, does it matter whether it was filmed in slow motion or not? That's a really good question. So uh, filming in slow motion essentially just means filming at more frames per second than your sequence. So if your sequence is at say 12 frames per second and you shot at 24 frames per second, then that would be essentially slow motion because you shot at more frames per second than your sequence. 24 frames per second or 23 by 976 frames per second, it is a good estimation of what we see in real life. And it is a good number to make it look not choppy at the end. So here's something, here's something that's interesting. So let's do, let's do one of these clips and I'll show you what, chop, what I mean by that. Let's do one of these clips. Let's go back to cam B. Let's do this clip. Yeah, let's do, let's do something active. Um, they're all kind of passive. Oh, the active ones are at the back here. Yeah, right here. So this where I'm like cutting the egg. Let's play it right now because it's it was recorded in 60 frames per second. And I changed it to 23,976. So see how it's in slow motion now? If we were to change it to a lower frame rate, so right click, modify, interpret footage. So instead of 23.98, we changed it to like 10, for example. It would play back super, super choppy. So let's play that. See how it's kind of just like, I mean, it's still very, very slow, but it's, it's choppier. Let's try that again. No, uh, did I not? Yeah. And if I go frame by frame, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to go uh, right and left on my keyboard. And you'll see, I'm going to tell you when I'm cl clicking right and left, but sometimes you won't see a change of frame. So I'm going frame, 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 frame. Oh, I think it auto, I put it auto puts those in between frames in. That's cool. Um, another way to kind of see this is let me bring in something that was originally shot at 2398. So something like this. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. So here, so I'm cutting this egg. I'm going to do I cutting this egg and O, and I'm going to bring this in just the video, not the audio by going over here to drag video only and then dragging it in just to show you what it does. Drag video only right there. Oh, and another another little tip for you 
is if you have um if you have a lot of like stuff going on like for example you just want to work with this clip in the timeline for now but you have all these other clips in your timeline and they're all 4k clips and they're all annoying to play back because playing back three rows of 4k with a fourth row of 4k on top of it is just a lot um you can just hide them over here over here in the eyes you just hide them and that way they won't bug you and mute that too so now you can like exclusively work on this one and they won't like make your computer work harder and they won't slow you down so here we go we have this say i want to change the rate of it i want to make it slow motion even though it wasn't recorded in slow motion in the first place right so i can do right click speed duration change that speed to 50 press ok so now it's playing back slower but it wasn't recorded originally in 60 frames per second so it's going to play back pretty choppy and let's zoom in on that so you can see it a little bit better watch it play back choppy and as i click uh frame by frame 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 you can see it only has a new frame every second frame because it basically stretched something out that didn't have any in between frames so that's all it has but um there is a way that you can make it less choppy in premiere so if you go to right click speed duration and you select time interpolation over here and you use optical flow instead of frame sampling optical flow and then press ok so that's going to do is it's going to insert it's going to do its best to insert those in between frames so now if i go right 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 it just like it helps by making it a little bit smoother so let's play that but it's still pretty choppy and guess what the more stretched out you get the choppier it gets so this time instead of going right click speed duration typing in a speed of like 20 percent clicking okay because you don't want to have to do that for every single thing you can just change your tool so right now i'm on the selection tool i could just change it to a rate stretch tool by going to r and that way as i expand or contract it changes the rate how can you tell well this number right here in the brackets that's the speed so if I'm, whoop, if I'm stretching it right and left, it changes the speed. So say I wanna make it real slow, that is just gonna be really, really choppy because it wasn't shot at 23.97, or it was shot at 23.976. Whereas if I drag in a clip that was originally shot at 60, even if it's not interpolated like this one, or let's drag, Mm -hmm. now let's drag in the one with the yeah let's drag in this one uh and let's go to interpret and then just use the frame name frame rate from file the original frame rate which is 60 and then go i and o drag that in and then use my rate stretched so right now it's playing back at regular speed but i use my rate stretch tool i go to r and i stretch it out and then i play it See how it plays back in nice smooth motion because it had those frames inside of it to allow it to do that whereas this one didn't because it was originally shot in 2398 so if that makes sense i feel like that was a really long explanation um <laughs> reverb mike says if it does not spark joy turn off the eyeball <laughs> vary that that is the energy that we're trying to project today. So another way to, um, to do this in and out workflow, if you are feeling fancy about it, is you don't even have to pull it up in the source monitor over here. You can do it straight up from your bins. So if you go to your, um, if you go to your bin organization over here, you see how as you scrub through it, as you let me actually make these thumbnails a lot bigger yeah let's make it that big why not we're living we're living our life as you hover over them this is called hover scrub it scrubs through it so literally you do not have to like double click on the clip 
bring it up here, then move this indicator, go to I, move it over to O, and then press the, the comma or the period. Um, period is uh, overwrite. So that's actually a good point to talk about too, is um, the overwrite and insert. So I was having you press period when we were building our string out over here, because when you're at the end of a sequence, instead of somewhere in the middle, and you are trying to bring clips in, it doesn't matter what you press. So pressing period or and pressing comma is going to be the same thing. However, if you're trying to insert this clip over here in the middle, that's going to make a big difference. So if you're trying to put it in there and then you press period, that's the overwrite command. It's going to overwrite whatever is existing there in the first place. Whereas if you press comma, that is going to insert. And that is even more important when you are trying to put B-roll straight up from the, uh, the source monitor into like your fourth row, your fourth video row and your fifth audio row, because if you press period, it's going to go exactly where you want it to go. Right. But cause it's going to, um, over, <laughs> I get them confused. It's going to overwrite, but if you press comma, it's going to insert, it's going to shift everything over. So just FYI. And again, for those of you who weren't there earlier, the reason that those commands are going into these rows specifically is because I turned on the, uh, the source patching over here on V1 and, and a five, I turned it on here. So if I didn't, if they stayed at defaults, cause they're always going to default to, you know, V1 and A1 tracks. And now if I press the comma or the period, it's going to go there instead. Right. So I want it to go into V5 and A5. So I'm going to press period. There it is. But like I was saying before, before I got sidetracked, cause there's, I mean, this is such a deep program. I could just talk about it forever, but in order to do this, I had to, first of all, double click on this. Second of all, I had to move this time indicator. That's a lot of work. Why can't we do it quicker? Well, we can. So if we just hover scrub over something, hover scrub, okay, then we can just click, we can use this indicator here and we can go I and O and then period. So we don't even have to, if we wanted to, and we were building the string out, for example, and we had all these, maybe we have them. Uh, can you hover scrub? Yeah, you can, you can do it here. So maybe, maybe we just make a new layout that is just our bin and just our timeline, because right now we have this and we have this, but they are useless to us when we're building our string out. So we just want more room to play with. So what we can do is we can simply close them. We can close this panel, close this panel, close this panel, close this panel, and close this panel. Don't need them. Don't need them. And now look at that. We have our own little magical situation here where we're, we're just seeing our, um, we're just seeing our thumbnails over here. Let's make them bigger. Let's say clip size large, or I can just zoom in on the size here. So we just have our little thumbnails here. We're building our cool little string out here. And let's say that we want to save this layout. We want to save this whole layout for when we next need to use it for when we're building string outs. That's a really easy way to do it. We just go over here to the, um, to the hamburger menu under editing over here, and we can go to save as new works. Hmm, hello, save as new workspace. So if we go to save as new workspace and we're going to type in, um, let's see, string out and press okay, it shows up as a new workspace over here. So we can always go back to the editing workspace by going to 
reset to saved layout. So this is back to our editing workspace by the default editing workspace. And then if we want to build a string out, we just go to the string out layout. And there we are, we're back, we're back at it. So we don't have to do anything. So we can just go over here. Okay, let's keep building this string out. Let's go I and O period. Let's keep going. Let's go I and O period. I and O period. Okay, now over here to this one. I and O period. Oh, somebody just started up a car right outside my window. I don't know if you heard that, but you might have. I O period. Cool, huh? Do, 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 do. Um, let's see. Fairy asks, wait, what? No, I think I answered all these questions. The, the chat is about like 40 seconds behind what I'm actually saying. So a lot of times if you ask a question in the chat, um, I won't see it until much later. So, okay. Um, one thing I also want to talk about, because so we talked about hover scrubbing. We just talked about it, right? We talked about in and out points, track targeting. Uh, we did some timeline shortcuts if you're trying to edit in the timeline. And we talked about how to set durational markers and labels. But something that I want to talk about is what if you want to work within the restraints of your edit after it's already mostly done? So let's do that. Let's go back to the editing workspace and let me pull up under sequences over here. So this is my final video, right? Oh, and by the way, um, before I, before I finish this today, I do want to plug this because this is super useful. I think for people, um, I have created, if, if this is like mind blowing to you and maybe it's a little bit more advanced i have created a beginner's course and i'm talking like you've never opened the program before you don't know what you're doing um i've created a beginner's course and it is on the same youtube channel that this video is on and it was uploaded yesterday so you can go check it out it's called uh what's it called premiere pro for beginners i think hold on i don't remember but essentially it's my it's two and a half hours um, and the reason I'm mentioning it is because I'm using the same assets today, the, this cooking stuff, I'm using the same assets today as I am showing in that video. So you can download these exact same assets and you can play around with them. I'm giving them away for free and it's in the description of that video. So thank you, Tim, for posting it in the chat. Um, so yeah, if you want to download all of this footage and play with it yourself, it's for free. I'm giving it to you. So um, back to this. So let's remember those uh, that that row row V4 and those B-roll clips that we placed, the yellow ones. So let's 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 dive in a little bit more into those right here. So let's say, for example, that. I want to use a different portion of this clip. So if I double click on it, you can see here that this gray area is the portion of the clip that I'm using over here. But let's say that instead of the gray, I wanted to use like, oh. instead of that, I wanted to use a clip from over here. Right. I wanted to use a different section of the same clip. So this full clip obviously extends a lot and extends a lot there. So this is what I think someone would do first, right? They would expand this clip. Then they would look for that spot in it that you want to use. Okay. Oh, now it's too long. So I got to put it on a separate on its own separate thing to expand it further and keep searching. Okay, there, there, that's what I want. So I'm going to bring that over now. Oh, snap, I lost it. Where was it? I don't know. Gosh, darn it. Uh, okay, well, I guess, there we go. That's what someone would do. 
oh my God, that is, that takes so much time. I mean, first of all, just to save yourself a little bit of the hassle before, if you are going to do that whole rigmarole, instead of doing that, at least put a little timeline marker where this clip is supposed to start. So, you know, um, give yourself like a little marker there M. So at least, you know, where it's supposed to start and then maybe actually maybe give yourself another one for where it's supposed to end. So the original clip, that's how long it was. It's, uh, um, it started here and it ended here. So let's place markers where let's place markers there. M and then M at the very least. So that if you're going to go through that whole giant process of trying to find that other piece, you can at least do that. Oh my goodness. Wow. But that took so long. One way that you can, instead of doing all that, um, with the placing of the markers, with the putting it on a different timeline, with the expanding it, you can use the slip tool to just slip inside of that, um, of that clip to find a different portion of the clip. But the beginning and end cut points are going to be retained. So instead of doing all that, let's undo that. Undo, 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 undo. All you have to do is use the Y command, right? Why? Why do we use the Y? Because if we select it and then we press Y, look what happens. Our cursor changes from the regular uh, selection tool to the slip tool. This is why. This is why we use the Y. Oh my gosh. Are you tired of my puns yet? Welcome to living with me, by the way. Anyone who lives with me has to put up with puns. Anyway, so as we uh, click and hold and drag to the left or the right, what you'll see is you'll see a new you'll see a new monitor pop up here. That is the slip tool window, and it's going to show you um, what the beginning of the clip looks like and what the end of the clip looks like. The two thumbnails for the beginning and the end of the clip. So you can find new ones. So I'm going to just start holding it and dragging it. Look at that. So then I can slip to oh, exactly where I want. There it is. Bam. Without having to do all that. Um, do, 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 do. Susan said that was that will be useful to watch for beginners. Yes, definitely go onto the Adobe Video Motion channel to see that beginner tutorial. Um, Akbar says, this has to be one of the best Adobe lives in a while. I have to jump. Well, goodbye. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's see. We have just a few more minutes. So if anybody has any questions, like literally any last minute questions, this would be the time. Today, we have gone through um, a lot of stuff. Oh, here's one Here's one more, right? Say that you want to maybe use uh, two, two sections of this clip, right? Let me, you may want to use this one, but you may want to use the other one too, and you want to duplicate it. And one way to duplicate it would be right-click, uh, reveal in project. Okay, there it is. And then drag it back in. Oh, it's too long. Darn it. So now I have to find the new spot in it, which is like I, and then O, and then drag it in here. Yeah, that's a lot of work, right? So instead, just click on the clip, hold, hold down, uh, sorry, hold down Alt, and then drag, and that duplicates the clip. So you can duplicate on top of itself if you want. Um, but yeah, now it duplicates the clip. So now you can go on this clip, go Y, and then slip to whatever other portion of the clip you want. You can also go a lot faster with the slipping if you just hold down shift. So if you don't hold down shift, you see how it just, it goes mm, kind of slow. But then if you hold down shift, it just like zooms, it zooms around. So there we go. Now we have the same clip, but different portions of it because we just duplicated it really quickly by using the alt command. All right, everybody. Well, I only have one more minute left. So this was really, really um, fun to be here with you and show you some of my 
tips for how to edit faster. Um, I hope that you got a lot out of it. If you did, please let me know in the Behance chat if you did. Next week or two weeks from now, we're going to be talking all about audio, um, how to sweeten audio. We're going to be using all like literally all of all of my best tips on how to make audio sound better. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, afternoon, night, evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>